Time after time I went searching for peace in some void. I was trying to blame all my ills on this world I was in. Surface relationships used me till I was done in. And all the while someone was begging to free me from sin. He was there all the time. He was there all the time. Waiting patiently in line. He was there all the time. Never again will I look for a fake rainbow's end. Now that I have the answer, my life is just starting to rhyme. Sharing each new day with Him is a cup of fresh life. Oh, what I missed, He was waiting, waiting right, right there all the time. Aren't you glad for the Lord's faithfulness? Amen. Amen. Waiting there all the time. We realized that uh, we were going to need to provide a special song tonight. And my wife's saying, what in the world can we sing? And that song popped in my head. We never sung it together before. I've heard it many times. But it popped into my head and she said, I know exactly what book that, that's in. And she went digging. And uh, now you've heard it. He was there all the time. Some of you were singing along with us, so that's an oldie that uh, a number have heard across the years, and it just really spoke to my heart. Amen. I'm in the book of 1 Samuel tonight, 1 Samuel chapter 7. An interesting story that takes place here when the Israelites were under the duress of the Philistines, but God heard and answered prayer in an incredible way, and uh, as I looked at this story and at this lesson, it just really, really spoke to me and just thought this is what I need to share with you tonight. First Samuel chapter 7, I invite you to stand if you are able as we read the word, First Samuel chapter Seven, and I want to begin at verse 7. It says, And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, 
that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering, holy, completely unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel. Can anybody tell me what that next phrase says? I don't know when that phrase hit me like it did this afternoon. I was sitting in my easy chair and I was reading through this passage of Scripture again. And I thought, Lord, I'm so glad you can hear us. Now, I don't know that Samuel got this kind of answer. I know I don't often get this kind of answer. Yes, Alan, I've heard your prayer. I'm going to do exactly what you want me to do. No, but have you ever been confident that as you were praying, whether it comes to pass or not, that God heard you? Something registered, you just knew. You just knew there was something of a connection that you had with God and the rest that comes to your spirit, the confidence that comes to you when you're praying a prayer like that and you just know that God heard you. It, it's all right. So, you know, I've learned this much in life, especially as a minister of the gospel. There are a lot of times people value just being heard. They just value being heard. Thank you for a listening ear. And if, if that's all the further we get in our prayer life, that's enough to bless you still. Thank you, Lord, that you have a listening ear. You know the burden of my heart. You know the cry of my heart. Wow. It'll take you to a new level of excitement in serving Jesus, whether it comes to pass or not. I know he heard my prayer. Amen. I know he heard my prayer. So verse 9, it says, the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them. And they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. So the Philistines were subdued And they came no more into the coast of Israel, and the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. Wow. It's an incredible story. May the Lord help us to try to unpack it tonight. Lord, touch us and enable us, and may we experience a surge to our prayer life that will empower us and enable us to see victory in our own life and on behalf of those burdens we carry. The Lord will give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Dehe Host, uh, the man who took over for Hudson Taylor, if you remember any of the stories of Hudson Taylor and the remarkable things God helped him to accomplish uh, for the work of God as a missionary in China and wherever else his, his life took him. But uh, D.E. Host is the man who took over for Hudson Taylor. And D.E. Host had an experience. He, he wrote a book entitled uh, Behind the Ranges. Behind the Ranges. He was trying to analyze a problem he had seen while working 
in two different villages in China. The people with whom he lived and worked were not doing very well. But the people in the other village across the ranges were doing fine. They were doing excellent. And he visited them only now and then, but they were always doing fine. And so Dehihos began to ask the Lord, what's making the difference here? They are ones I can only get to periodically. Here I am working with these people continuously. We're struggling here. They're doing fine over there. And um, so... How how could those across the ranges be doing better than those with him he lived and worked? And he said the Lord showed him uh, the, the answer. He said, although I was spending much time counseling and preaching and teaching with those with whom he lived and, and worked every day, he was spending a lot of time working with them just as, as faithfully as he could, uh, he actually was spending much more time in prayer for those who were across the ranges, those who were over the ranges. And he concluded that there were four basic elements from this experience and his talking with the Lord. There were four basic elements that it took to disciple people for the kingdom and to see growth in their life spiritually, to make disciples. He, he, he felt like there were four basic things that were very important in doing that. Number one, he said, was prayer. Number two, he said, was prayer. Number three, he said, what do you think it was? It was prayer. Number four, was the word. That's, that's challenging. And he said it was in, in that order and in that proportion that it was. There is much value, a host of value in spending time with people and counseling and teaching and all of those things. Hopefully it's all based on the word but it's been immersed in prayer, prayer, and prayer. And then we work with them and disciple them. Interesting story, but a, a really a lot of truth and the emphasis where it needs to be. I picked up this statement in the course of my preparation for this message, and that is this. Prayer is exhaling the spirit of man and inhaling the spirit of god that's powerful prayer is an exhaling the spirit of man and inhaling the spirit of god wow i thought lord if you would help me in my prayer life In my prayer life, to have that, that's, that's almost a visual that would be profitable for us. As we go down before God in prayer, it's emptying ourselves out before him. Less of me, more of you. Oh, God, help me to become emptied to the point of, of, of self and anything that, that hinders your presence and you permeating the fullness of me. Lord, help me to be able to push enough of that out and away, less of me, so that I can inhale more of you. That's a powerful statement. I hope it's helpful to us. I just, I just found it in the last few days. In this passage tonight, we have read of a, a difficult and tragic season in the history of Israel. 
God had provided abundantly for them, and yet they had grown complacent, uh, perhaps overly confident. You know, God is with us. We're his chosen people. He's going to look out for us. And lo and behold, the Philistines. They'd come to that, that point. Their focus was, seemed to be no longer so much on the Lord, but, but on their prosperity. And due to their lack of obedience, God allowed judgment to come into their life. I fear that where we live today, in, in this age in which we live, that is, that is very much a, a possibility to happen to any one of us. We've received the blessing of God so long, we've grown complacent, overly confident. Uh, we've lost the power of God in the process. If we're not careful, it, it'll, it'll go, it'll dissipate because uh, we, we've, we've got to keep inhaling the Spirit of God. Uh, we, we cannot lose the urgency of a, a prayer life that is emptying us out and allowing God to fill us up and to help us. Uh, and so that's one thing I believe that we need in our day more than anything else. If we're going to see revival, if we're going to see a genuine change, we must have the power of God in our midst. Exhaling self, inhaling the Spirit of God. Israel found that God was there all the time, as we just sang about. They found out that God had not abandoned them. God, in fact, was there. He's still the mighty God. He's still the I Am. And while they were being uh, faced by the Philistines in a difficult time in their life like they had not seen in years, God was there all the time. He wanted nothing more than to bless them, but they had to meet his conditions. And that's how it is with all of us. We too must come to grips with where we are and seek the Lord if, if we are to enjoy his blessing again and again and again. I love the times when he comes near, but I believe we need something that, that keeps building. We need something that is not just and occasional, but something that becomes the norm for us. The blessing of God, the presence of God. And I, I believe this is the recipe. An aspect of this, at least, is, is a recipe to experiencing that. If we could just imagine God is standing ready to help us. And he wants to give a fresh infilling in your life and mine, and in our church as a whole, but he needs our cooperation. He needs our obedience. Amen. Our hunger for it. Our desire for it. Our recognition of our need for it. And not just kind of become complacent. We're abundantly blessed. We are so blessed. And that's one of the dangers that we have. Is that we have so much. We have so many blessings. And we have it so good. And we're, we're blessed with our church and with, with God's presence and how he helps us and the, the number of people and the talents we have, et cetera, et cetera. The people are committed to God. We're blessed with all of that, but friend, that's not enough. We have got the, to have the anointing, the fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, it becomes Pastor Walter's church, you know, or it becomes identified as somebody or some organism that is here and not a place that is truly recognized as a place that God meets with them. God is in that place. The Philistines had a way of keeping after Israel with battles, thinking they could keep Israel from becoming too powerful. On this occasion, Israel was caught basically unarmed. Israel was caught unprepared, uh, unprepared for war. Israel had come together for a good reason. They had come together to fast and pray. They did not come prepared to enter into a war, physically speaking, with the Philistines as now they were being faced with. They didn't come to fight. They came to fast and pray. And prayers and tears, therefore, being all the weapons that many of them had, 
Guess what? It was upon prayers and tears that they had to rely. And that's one of the, boy, you hate to say it, but that's almost one of the best places we need to be in. Where we realize, you know what? My only hope is the uplook. The only, the only answer to coming through this is God intervening. And so then rather relying on the flesh and relying on some practice that typically works to, to build some momentum and get us going, whether it's an attendance effort like we're doing, that's good, I'm all for it. But I want to tell you something, we need more than that. Too often people relegate prayer to the last resort. I talked about that this morning. But may I remind us that too often everything else, everything else but prayer has failed miserably. Gimmicks, tricks, man-made ways sooner or later are going to need something to prop them up. They may work for a while. We can't afford to put all this effort into anything without prayer. Without God helping us. Exhaling self and inhaling, inhaling the Spirit. God. High learning and modern medicine, state-of-the-art machinery, great arsenals, cash flow, you name it, have, have hindered our faith in many respects, have hindered our faith. They are of no value to us when what we have done, what, what we have before us is a matter that, that can only be resolved by prayer and fasting. You can have all of that, but if you don't have prayer and a going down before God, it's to no avail. May the Lord help us. You know, no wonder, no wonder the devil fights us so hard when we determine to seek God. How often have we seen it, especially for somebody that comes in new to the faith? And the devil pulls out all the stops to try and wreck and ruin the beginning of their journey by throwing everything at them. No wonder the devil fights us so hard when he says, when he recognizes that, whoa, 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 I'm going to lose here if I don't do something to try and take their eyes off of God and somehow distract them from making any more spiritual strides than what they've gone already. And he uses people in the way too often to help him get that done, to discourage somebody that they're, they're running down a rabbit trail and It's not going to amount to anything and get them all discouraged. Friend, what we're talking about tonight is real. What this this matter of of a relationship with Jesus Christ is is real. And it's life-changing, as Sister Shuey was talking about tonight, transforming. Thank God for it. And you can be sure the devil doesn't like it when one determines by the grace of God. I'm going to inhale all of the Spirit of God that I can. We want to follow his leadings. Be confident the devil will fight us, no doubt about it. Who knows, however, the miracle that God has awaiting you and me if we will will keep prevailing in prayer and fasting. Amen. Let's not give up on the brink of a miracle. I see here a little outline that I'll share with you yet tonight uh, for those who like to jot some notes and maybe have a little outline. I think for this section that has Samuel's prayer in it, uh, that could be called determined prayer. Determined prayer. Verse 7, 8, and 9. Samuel was, was called on to intercede for Israel. His sacrifice of a young lamb Without a prayer would have been an empty shadow. You know, he would have been following the pattern of offering a sacrifice 
but he, without the prayer, it just would have been a, a shadow. He just would have been offering a, a lamb, a sacrificial lamb. His prayer without the sacrifice of a young lamb would have not been so prevalent. Uh, but both together, I believe, teach us what great things we can expect from God in answer to those prayers which are made with faith in Christ's atoning sacrifice. Amen. The, this, this one lamb that Samuel uh, used here, typifying the lamb of God, was more acceptable than thousands of rams and bullocks would have been without faith. Without faith and without prayer, it was more acceptable to God because of how Samuel did it. A sacrifice unto God and a prayer of faith, believing God. And though Samuel was not a priest, yet he offered the sacrifice. It says he offered the sacrifice. I think there's a possibility he had Eliezer do it, uh, offer the sacrifice. And yet you know, Samuel gets credit for it because he was his his aide, his helper, uh, who did it. I, I don't know the exact circumstance, but either way, the Lord heard him, as we talked about earlier. The Lord heard the prayer, and while he was yet speaking, God heard and answered in thunder, nonetheless. Verse, uh, in, in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24, it says, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Amen. What a promise that you and I can have. So a determined prayer. Secondly, I think there's a dedicated praise. Verse 10, 11, and 12. Literally, the Lord thundered with a great voice. He confounded the Philistines with a mighty tempest of thunder and lightning. No doubt, no doubt, uh, slew many by the lightning. Who knows? Uh, the thunder, the lightning. Josephus, the historian uh, tells that he adds that perhaps there was even a great earthquake that happened in the midst of this. The thunder happens, the earthquake occurs, and a bunch of them were swallowed up and destroyed that way. We don't know. These are some things that, that people have, have considered, have thought up that could have happened. I can just about picture the Philistines dropping their arms as they are in flight, I mean, the ground is shaking, the thunder is happening, the lightning is striking, and they're just, they're getting out of there, and they're dropping everything, and the Israelites are chasing after them, and they're gathering up their weapons, because remember, the Israelites didn't have weapons, they went to fast and pray. They weren't prepared for war, so they gather up the Philistines' weapons and finish off the ones that God didn't already take care of with the thunder, lightning, and earthquake. However, God was doing it. And then we see in verse 12 that Samuel took a stone. Samuel erected a, a thankful memorial of victory. He takes a stone to the glory of God for the encouragement of the people of Israel. And he talks about Ebenezer, the stone of help. No doubt it was just a plain, unpolished stone, uh, which was not prohibited by the Levitical law that they were having to abide under. They, they, uh, uh, I didn't study into all the details of it, but uh, there were, to, to keep people from worshiping some bright, colorful object, uh, you know, part of their sacrifice was to be a, just a plain, unpolished stone. That, uh, that you put up as a, a thing of remembrance. So it doesn't seem there would have been any danger in worshiping a stone. Just set up as a monument of victory. If ever people's hard hearts should lose the impressions of this providence, this, this stone would either, would either revive the remembrance of it and make them thankful, or this stone would remain there standing as a witness against their unthankfulness that had taken over in their life. The reason he gives for the name Ebenezer is, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. From that point to this point, all along the way is Jesus, we would say. He, would, he said, the Lord 
hath helped us. And this victory was gained in, in the very same place where the Israelites had received uh, their former fatal loss. They had been through a major loss in that particular region. Uh, but they acknowledged how God has helped them. He hath begun to help us, though not completely to deliver us yet. Hitherto the Lord hath helped us. And by this cautious uh, expression, we find that he excited both a thankfulness within them, a thankfulness for uh, his mercy that they were receiving, but also, I believe, exciting a holy fear uh, within them and a, a care to please and serve the Lord that he might help and deliver them fully. Remember the Apostle Paul, he said to King Agrippa, when he stood before King Agrippa, he said, Having therefore obtained help from God, I continue unto this day. That's, that's, that's an excellent statement and one good for us to, to keep in mind. Because God has helped me thus far, I continue. Amen. By the grace of God. He's been here before. He's helped me to this point. I see no reason for him that he's going to bail on me now. He is going to be faithful to me. And so the Apostle Paul is saying to King Agrippa, you might have me in your grip. You might have me in this circumstance. But I just want you to know I am not recanting. I'm not backing down on God. He's been faithful to me to this point, And he will see me through to the end. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. This was not the first time that Israel had erected a stone as a testimony to God. They were instructed, remember the story of Joshua? And uh, Joshua had instructed them to set up 12 stones after they, they crossed uh, the Red Sea. After that experience, uh, where they passed over Jordan, as a reminder and a testimony to the faithfulness of God. And I believe it would do us good. It would certainly do us good to be able to set up some stones in our lives. Amen. To have some markers. To have some identification uh, things, you know, somewhere uh, in our life that are a good reminder. You know what? The Lord helped me there. And when I face something like that again, thank God I can be remembering that and reminded that, yes, he's going to help me again. He'll see me through that again. He sees us through death and sorrow, through loss of loved ones, through afflictions, through the challenges of life, setbacks financially and issues we might face in our marriage or with our or, or, or with our work situation. Just any number of things. And we can be confident that God will be faithful to see us through. It's good for us to, to put some markers there that are good to remind us that God has helped me thus far and he will continue to see me through. Hard times will come. Despair and doubt will soon enough fill our hearts. But if we can see the glory uh, once again and set up a reminder. I believe it will help us. It will strengthen us when we're weak. When the devil seems like he's just about to get the upper hand in our memory or the sign of something once again reminds us that, ah, old devil, I got news for you. God's helped me before. He's going to help me again. He's going to see me through this. Wouldn't it be great to have our children ask us some questions down the road? Why, why, did, why do you have that, that, that mark on the wall? You know, why, why do you, you know, why have you kept this tradition? Or I don't know what it might be, but something of a marker, a stone that you put somewhere in your life and down the road, somebody says, tell me about that. Oh, how much time have you got? You wouldn't believe how God saw me through a situation right there. That's there to keep me reminded of how faithful God was. Amen. Be able to tell our children, others following, how good God has been, how faithful he's been in our journey. Praise the Lord. The last thing 
I would mention to us as if from thir- verse 13 that uh, there is a divine punishment that was meted out by God upon the Philistines. A divine punishment. No doubt Samuel did many great, many great offices for Israel. What a blessing he was as he served through those years. But here we're only told how instrumental he was in securing the public peace for the children of Israel. The Philistines had had the upper hand, had made life miserable for them. And here it tells us specifically how Samuel was used of God to be able to see a punishment meted out to the Philistines. The Philistine spirits were so crushed and their losses were so great That as long as Samuel lived, they were never again a threat to Israel. That's powerful. That's amazing. That's an incredible defeat. I don't know how long he lived after that. But the word tells us that they were no longer a threat to Israel during the remaining years of Samuel. And this experience became so etched in their memory that they had an invisible line almost. It almost would seem that way. Every time they'd get so close to the border, anywhere tempted, tempted to try and get Israel again, it was like an invisible fence that you might have for your pet, your dog. You know, isn't it amazing? I, I remember we had a German shepherd, and she, was, she could be mean. She liked to bite other dogs, bite people. And uh, I said, I'm getting a fence. My wife said, it'll never work. She's too mean. She sees another dog. She didn't care. Off she would go. If she could get loose and pummel that dog. Never killed any, but scared us to death a few times. I got one of those fences, an invisible fence. All it took was a shock or two. She knew exactly where her line was. And I wonder sometimes if it wasn't that way for the Philistines. Can you imagine? They thought they were really something. They were pretty bold. They get to a certain marker, a certain point. They're like, "Ah, no way. I'm not touching that. I'm not going there. You talk about God doing an incredible thing. It was like an invisible fence for, for them. And they were not about to mess with Israel as long as Samuel lived. It didn't happen. Samuel was a protector, a deliverer to Israel, not by dint of the sword. Remember, they were, all they had was prayer and fasting. Wasn't the sword, as Gideon, wasn't by the strength of the arm, as Samson, wasn't that either. What was it? It was by the power of prayer to God and carrying on a a work of reformation among the people. And I want to tell you something. I I believe that a, a true relationship with God and a life of humility before God, recognizing that, Lord, less of me, more of you, is a key to the power that we need to see revival personally and collectively. It's it's the cure, I believe. It's the way to secure revival. Some of the best securities of, of a nation is to know God and be humble before him. So let's be confident in praying. That's a that's a tool, that's a weapon that you and I have, an incredible weapon. And while we might not be able to see things visibly, God God can put a hedge of protection. He can cause things to to work in such a way that the devil's defeated again and again and again. God gives you victory after victory because you have settled it to go with God. Emptying out of self, exhaling self, inhaling. 
the Holy Spirit. God wants to give you victory in your life. I don't know what you're facing, what challenges you're up against, but we can trust God. We can rely on God. Let's do our part to experience his nearness and his power at work in our life. Let's be confident in our praying. Let's let God fight our battles as we submit to him in prayer and fasting. Let's stand back and see the salvation of God and and let us be thankful and acknowledge the prayers that God answers along the way, knowing that our God is enough. He'll see us through. Praise his name. We may lose some battles here and there, but God's all about getting us through this, and ultimately we're going to win the war. Amen. We're going to win the war. God's got victory for us. Praise his name. The song in our chorus book, I'm not sure how long it's been since we last sang it, but I think I want to finish with it tonight. The devil was defeated again. I can remember we talked about history and remembering back some things of the past. And I, well, Every time I think of this song, I picture the Edwards, the Edwards family, the Edwards trio, and they're singing this song. Of course, they had a myriad of verses for it. We only have a select one in here, number 304, number 304, but it was kind of an endless song. They would just keep singing, and it would relate the various stories of Scripture, how uh, things look hopeless and things look dark and, and destitute, but then God would come through and the devil would be defeated again. And uh, I'm trusting God for more of those kinds of stories to occur in your life and mine as we're up against it. But God comes through. Praise his name. Let's stand together, number 304. The devil was defeated again. Start with the chorus. Oh, the Lord will fight your battles if you'll let him. He will lead you safely through this wicked land. With the fullness of his grace, he will engulf you. He will hide you in the hollow of his hand. He will fight the devil off when you are dying. Heaven's door he'll open wide to let you in. As you enter, you can shout goodbye, oh devil. I'm through with you and you're defeated again. And the devil sought to kill the king of glory. From the manger to the cross he hunted him. He rejoiced when Jesus died on old Golgotha, and his cup of joy was filled up to the brim. All the imps rejoiced to see our Savior buried, so they said the battle's over and we win. But Christ arose up from the grave, a mighty victor, and the devil was defeated again. Oh, our Lord will fight your battle if you let him. He will lead you safely through this wicked land. With the fullness of his grace, he will engulf you. He will hide you in the hollow of his hand. He will fight the devil off when you are dying heaven's door he'll open wide to let you in as you enter you can shout goodbye oh devil i'm through with you and you're defeated again praise god i trust you'll see some victory in your life this week, recognition of God at work, because you're letting him be at work. Amen. Letting him have his way. Katie, would you dismiss us in prayer tonight, please?